In order to further our understanding of the anatomy and physiology of a human kidney, a sheep kidney or a cow kidney dissection are a great way to dive deeper into this filtering organ of your body. In this specific dissection, I am looking at a sheep kidney, which is usually much smaller than a human kidney. If you take your hands and make it into a fist, that's the size of your kidney typically. Most human bodies have two kidneys, one on the left side, one on the right side, and they are located in your lower back, right beneath your ribs. So if you've ever had kidney stones or any kidney problems, that pain usually is in your lower back, right where the kidneys are located. You can see where kidney beans got their name because our kidney has a very kidney bean shaped structure where it's curved on one side and then it indents on the other side. This location where the sheep kidney indents or your kidney indents is known as the renal hilum or the renal hilus as some people refer to it as. This indentation has three pipes or tubes that come out of it. And if you understand the anatomy and physiology of a kidney, you're probably very familiar with these tubes already. Remember your job of your kidneys is to filter your blood, to remove excess water, vitamins, minerals, salts from your blood, urea and nitrogenous waste compounds, so that your blood can then be returned to your body in a more clean fashion. These are the filters of your blood. So oxygenated but unfiltered blood arrives at your kidney through your renal artery. And I'm not exactly sure which blood vessel in this bundle is the renal artery versus the renal vein. I believe I see a blood vessel right here and a blood vessel right here. But let's just say this is our renal artery. And so this oxygenated but unfiltered blood comes to the kidney. That unfiltered blood travels through the internal system of our kidney, which we'll look at in a few moments, and the kidney filters out all of those impurities. That extra water, urea, salts, and anything else that our body doesn't need any longer forms a substance that you're very familiar with. That's what our pee is made out of. So the kidney collects all of this waste, this pee, right here, and that pee then trickles down this narrow and lighter tube right here, known as your ureter. Each kidney has a ureter. They're these thin, tiny tubes that go down your lower back. And if we had the full urinary system of the sheep, at the end of this ureter, we would, ureter, pardon me, we would find the urinary bladder which stores urine until it's an appropriate time to urinate or to go pee. Now, remember, the dirty blood or the unfiltered blood comes in the renal artery. The blood gets filtered and cleaned and all the waste goes down the ureter. But what about the good blood that's now left over? What about the red blood cells, the white blood cells, the platelets, the water that your body needs in the plasma, all the good stuff in your blood? That stays as blood and it travels back into your bloodstream through your renal vein, which takes away this filtered but now deoxygenated blood from the kidneys. Now you might be asking, why does the renal artery deliver oxygenated blood and the renal vein takes away deoxygenated blood? You need to remember that your kidneys are an organ and just like all of your other organs, your kidneys require fuel. What's the fuel for our body? That's ATP. And ATP can only be produced through the process of cellular respiration, which uses oxygen and sugar to produce energy or ATP. So the renal artery, delivers unfiltered blood, but it also delivers oxygen so that our kidney can do cellular respiration. Our kidney keeps that oxygen. And that's why when the blood is cleaned and it leaves through the renal vein, it leaves deoxygenated. So just to recap, renal hilum, ureter, and then in this bundle right here, we've got a renal artery or a renal vein. Before we dive a little deeper and look at the internal filtration system of our kidneys, I wanna show you a few more structures on the outside. The entire outside of the kidney is covered with this fibrous, dense, 
type of connective tissue. You can see when I pull on it, it lifts up, covers the entire kidney, and this is known as the renal capsule. This fibrous membrane functions to protect all of the soft and squishy internal anatomy of the kidney because your kidneys are such a precious, precious filtration system. Your body also covers your kidneys in adipose tissue or fat as an extra insulator and cushioner. A lot of our precious organs like our heart and our intestines and our liver have a membrane of adipose tissue or fat around them to protect them. And most of it has been removed from this kidney, but you still can see some remnants left over. Now it's dissection time. My kidney is pre-dissected, but I wanna show you the simple way I cut open our kidney. So this is the front of the kidney, this is the back of the kidney, although for the dissection, you really don't need to know which side is front and which side is back. In order to open the kidney up, you wanna put the kidney sideways so that the renal hilum, remember that's the indent of like our kidney bean, is down in the tray. Never hold a dissection specimen in your hand when you are cutting with a scalpel or with scissors because if that scalpel or scissors get loose, it's gonna shoot straight into your hand and not into the dissection tray, which is totally built to handle those kinds of cuts. So with the renal hilum face down or down in the tray, you'll take your scalpel and you wanna try and do as few cuts as possible and you're just gonna cut the kidney into equal front and back sides, straight down the middle. We call this specific cut that I already did a frontal cut because we're cutting it into a front side, into a behind side. One thing I noticed when I was cutting is I had to then go a little bit deeper and kind of cut some of the fibers here that were holding our kidney together. Now, if you want this cut, to be perfect. And to really show the anatomy of the kidney best, I would leave the kidney attached at the renal hilum. This way, we can see how the ureters and the renal artery and the renal vein actually all play into the larger anatomy of the kidney. So now that we can see inside the kidneys, we can see a couple major components. First thing I wanna point out is the renal capsule. You can see that outer covering from the inside of the kidney. And now I want you to focus on the bulk of the kidney and notice that on the outside of our kidney, there is a lighter colored tissue. And on the inside of our kidney, there is a darker, almost smoother type of tissue. The outer layer of each kidney is known as the renal cortex. And the inner layer of each kidney is known as the renal medulla. Both the renal cortex and the renal medulla contain parts of our nephrons. Remember, nephrons are the functional units of our kidney, which simply means this is where we take blood and we filter urine out of it while making sure we keep all the important parts of our blood. So a couple parts of the nephron that might sound familiar, the Bowman's capsule or the start of a nephron is in our renal cortex. And so this is where our blood is filtered in the first place and filtration occurs. And we remove all kinds of water and nutrients and urea and waste products from our blood. But the Bowman's capsule is a little too good at removing waste from the blood and it removes excess water and excess nutrients. So then you'll remember in the nephron, it ducks down into what we call the proximal convoluted tubule, which is still in the renal cortex, and down the loop of Henle. And in the proximal convoluted tubule and in the loop of Henle, which comes down here in the renal medulla, this is where the process of reabsorption occurs, where our kidney says, hey, Bowman's capsule, you did a great job, but you removed too much water and too many nutrients. So your body and your kidney actually reabsorbs that excess water and that excess nutrients back into our blood so we can keep that good stuff. So this filtrate 
comes down the loop of Henle and then goes back up the loop of Henle after reabsorption has occurred. And now it's really pretty much just P at this point, where it reaches the distal convoluted tubule, which comes back up into the renal cortex. The distal convoluted tubule is where your kidney has one final chance, your nephron has one final chance for any waste in the blood to get dumped into the urine. And so that happens here in the process of secretion. And then once we've made urine and we're officially done, the distal convoluted tubule ducks back down again and becomes a collecting duct. And these collecting ducts take urine from multiple nephrons and bring them down the renal medulla, down into this region, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Let's recap. The outermost layer of the kidney is known as the renal capsule. That's that protective case. Then we have the renal cortex, and this is where some parts of the nephron are. And deeper, we have the renal medulla, and this is where other parts of the nephron are. And your kidney just completed the process of filtration, reabsorption, and secretion to create pee or urine. That urine travels down the collecting ducts, and it comes out these what we call calluses. Calluses are just where the urine goes to travel from the collecting duct into our next structure. This structure right here is known as the renal pelvis. And this is where the urine from all those nephrons comes and converges and kind of sits inside the renal pelvis. Now urine doesn't stay inside this funnel-like structure for long. Urine very quickly leaves the renal pelvis and this is pretty cool how the kidney got cut. You can see an opening here. Think about it for a second. If all of our urine is gathered here and our kidney has already filtered the blood and the kidney's job is basically done, we need to take this urine and we need to send it down this tube. Think in your head, where is this tube going to end up? This tube is the start of our ureter. So that that renal pelvis sends all the urine down the ureter and the ureter takes all the urine down to the urinary bladder. One final recap on the anatomy of a kidney. This outer covering is our renal capsule. This indentation on the outside is the renal hilum, which contains the renal artery and the renal vein, also contains the ureter. Internally in the kidney, the outer layer of kidney tissue is called the renal cortex, deeper and typically darker, is the renal medulla. One structure I did not show you in the renal medulla that I wanna show you right now, you can see the renal medulla is broken into these triangular-like sections, and these are known as the renal pyramids, and they're just separations inside the renal medulla. After the renal medulla, you can see a couple calluses, places where urine comes from the collecting ducts into the renal pelvis, and lastly, the renal pelvis, I liked it better on this side, dumps into the ureter.